beginner at speaking, even if you're not a beginner at the language itself, the thought of going into a conversation with a native speaker can be pretty daunting. And if you've been putting it off, you are not alone. Because when you really think about it, all the conversations that we have day to day with people are pretty darn impressive. When we go out for a coffee with a friend, the conversation has the potential to go in literally any direction. We can talk about anything and everything. We go off on tangents, we refer back to stuff we said an hour ago or last week. And when we get really excited or fired up about a subject, the conversation can move pretty fast. And so when a lot of people think about practicing speaking, maybe to try and make friends in a new country, maybe in language meetups or language exchanges, they imagine, well, that, but in a foreign language. And if this is you too, I am not surprised that you don't feel ready for that. So today I want to challenge this idea that we seem to have of speaking where we swing between the two extremes of either practicing really stilted textbook dialogues or going straight into intense coffee and chat one-to-ones to discuss the world and everything in it. Because there is a middle ground. So here are three tips for making speaking less scary. Number one match your levels. Even if you're living in the country, even if you're surrounded by native speakers, if you're scared to go ahead and speak to them, start smaller. Speak to other learners or speak to native speakers who are learning your native language. Speak to people who are sharing this journey with you. And do that not just because they understand how it feels, but also because you can bring them so much. Even if all you know right now is the greetings, yes, no, perfect, well done, and you smile a lot. You can bring them so much value and that makes practicing your language less scary. Number two, talk at your own level. You don't both need to sit face to face or screen to screen and have a full blown conversation. There are so many ways of engineering your speaking session so that you don't even need to speak in full sentences. Literally, your main aim here is just to communicate and get that connection with another person in your new language. For example, have you ever played the game This or That, where you ask your partner things like cats or dogs, sweets or chocolate, and they have to answer as fast as they can? There are tons of lists of possible questions online already for this stuff in all of the most common languages. Sometimes with a view to dating, so watch out for that, but even that might give you some ideas. And number three, keep it visual. If you're speaking to each other online, share your screens and look at things together like online stores that sell clothing or jewellery or tech just so you can talk about what you like and don't like. Or head on to Google Images, again sharing your screen so you can both see the same thing, or onto Google Maps and tell each other about beautiful places but with those photos for support. If you can video call each other from your phones or tablets so that you've got some mobility, physically take your speaking partner to places. Show them around your house, give them a tour of your kitchen cupboards or your wardrobe. 
This stuff is always fascinating, and especially when you're sharing your culture at the same time. Call them from a park. Call them from interesting monuments in your town. And if you're speaking in person, this stuff is even easier. Go to places, bring them to your home or a shopping centre or have lunch out and talk about what's around you. Even if that means you're both looking up loads of words and doing all hand gestures and miming. Or bring a screen with you if it helps you to have that support and do all of those suggestions with Google Images and Google Maps, but just in person. And if you want to do it screen free, bring pens and paper so that you can draw to each other. I think so many of us have this image in our heads of what it should be like to speak. And we're so worried that what we'll actually do won't live up to that, that we decide that it's better to keep it in our heads until we're completely ready, whenever that might be. But the problem with that is that it means that some of us might just never speak or we'll start months or years later than when we first started thinking about it. So today, I just want to finish off by reminding you that you don't need to have conversations that'll change the world. You are not calling for world peace or challenging world leaders to take immediate action on climate change. You don't need to be persuasive or eloquent or literary. And you'll notice in this whole episode, I didn't even mention grammatical accuracy because I'm not even thinking about it. That is for way later. Aim for the connection first. Spend time with the person and spend time with the language. And if you know any language learners who could do with some encouragement and language pep, please forward this video to them. Like, subscribe and help me to grow a community of people that want to make language learning creative and meaningful. Thank you so much and I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.